Welcome everyone to our aggregators and brand show together my with my co-host uh, Omar. Uh, we are, uh, you know, very Andrew. much pleased uh, to uh, have Srinath today with us, uh, who is the CEO and uh, co-founder or the founder of the, the Intent Wise as well. So Srinath, nice to meet you and uh, well, thanks, welcome Sarah. to our, uh, you know, podcast. So how is it Great to have you, Srinath. Oh, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, great, great, to see, great to be here. Great. Um, so, Serena, the, the idea here with our aggregators and brands uh, podcast is to talk about the, you know, the strategies that brands can develop, like uh, as the aggregators are taking more and more kind of like a place in on the Amazon side. Uh, and you have also a, a, a great knowledge around the PPC, uh, you know, advertising. So that will be may, probably another area which we can uh, maybe uh, talk a bit deeper. But Tell before me. all of that, like, what's your view? The last few years, the aggregators are more and more uh, becoming uh, a, a reality in the space. Uh, I think like just the last week or 10 days yes. ago, Terrasio hmm. raised another billion, uh, which probably now the aggregators, uh, the total, uh, you know, raises more than 10 billion right now. Yeah. Uh, and um, things are getting really very interesting on the Amazon space with them. So what's your view on that? Huh. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, so 10 billion, 11 billion, those are big numbers. Certainly the, the money part of the game gets a lot of attention. Um, it's, I mean, it's always exciting to see a new format. Um, in essence, they're doing a roll-up play. Roll-ups are not, not new, they've always existed. Um, I think what's interesting here is um, you know, these companies, uh, just to be successful in the long run, I think they have to get three pieces right, which is, uh, acquisitions uh, and then operations and then in the not so distant future innovation right um, they still have to innovate and produce new products if they want to stay in the game and these three things the three words i just said are non-trivial they're all very complex and these companies are trying to get these three pieces together um, it, it is a complex endeavor uh, and i commend them uh, for you know going down that path um, uh, but I think what's required, I think, for them to succeed is, you know, lots of talent, lots of capital, lots of process, lots of technology. So we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. You know, like with any space, some will do great, others may not. And the other thing you notice is that there's aggregators uh, all over the world now. Uh, and I do think that what they do and the value prop they have does change by geography and region. Um, for instance, I'm from India in a place like India you know, what the aggregators can do um, or should do uh, in a place where e-commerce is still not very big, it's getting there. But that's very different from operating in the US. So the flavors are different, um, but then you see a lot of smart money going into this. So excited to be uh, part of it. You know, we, like I said, we interact and work with some of our clients already, and we are having some great conversations with, with a bunch of them. So it's exciting to see, um, and certainly will have impact on, I think the other aspect that we're gonna talk about, which is Amazon advertising. So yeah, that's that's my two cents, uh, but I learn something new about this space every day. So <laughs> who knows? So. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 it sounds really good because now having as well the view of, of India, which is obviously, as you already mentioned, different from the US, different from Europe, um, and it's coming up very strong. And I've seen myself, there are quite a few aggregators already over there as well uh, in India, yeah. which are pretty heavy, heavy funding. Um, and they're coming as well. Um, yeah. now, now the difference, what I've, what I've seen as well is that, uh, for example, Thrasio is already beginning to eat up other companies. Yeah. I say eat up, but you know, I should maybe better use the term uh, buying or acquiring. Um, it was a company called uh, Thristy. Uh, I just seen this mm -hmm. recently, um, which are as well fairly, which were fairly big. So we see, we see already uh, a shift, like you as well mentioned, there is already more money coming in. Uh, everything gets bigger. Um, 
what do you think about all of this uh, evolution? Uh, and what do you think? Because we have now, uh, uh, I think it's about 100 uh, high. Do we have about 100 hmm. aggregators right now? I've heard I that agree. number. Yeah, I heard that number. And I think, uh, I, uh, and I can't remember who mentioned this to me. The metaphor I've heard about an aggregator business is, is they are building a plane while flying it. <laughs> so uh, that kind of describes, <laughs> that, that, I thought that, that's kind of apt, right? Yes. Um, it's funny, even without aggregators been in this Amazon space, there was a dearth of talent uh, to manage these businesses. Oh, now you have aggregators. Yes, 100%. Right? So they, it, that was already there. Um, so, uh, you know, where they get all the, all the adequate talent and how they manage this. And by the way, the other interesting thing that you know, does, doesn't get talked about a lot is imagine that seller that they're acquiring, right? A lot of times it is this crazy logical entrepreneur that <laughs> is passionate about what they're doing and is willing to, uh, you know, run through walls and build a product and a, build a business. And, you know, you're entrepreneurs, I'm entrepreneur, and, you know, you can kind of relate to that. And it's it, a lot of times it takes that kind of passion and energy to build something. And when you acquire and exactly. such a person goes, uh, goes away, right? How do you maintain that innovation DNA in that company is a big problem. And uh, I shouldn't say problem, a big challenge that just has to get solved. And that doesn't get talked about enough right now because it's all like round one of, I don't know, a hundred round game. And the attention is so much on how much capital has been raised, which is all great. Um, but I think there is that aspect too. Uh, we just have to see who gets good at the innovation game, which I think you know, is super critical because if you think about playing on Amazon, it's a bit of a momentum game. You can have a bestseller today, but if you don't fast follow with some innovation on that product, you're going to lose it to somebody else. Uh, so, and that's not easy to build that innovation DNA yeah. across a bunch of different brands that you just acquired. And so we'll just sort of wait and see who gets good at this core time, you know? That right. I mean, I think, by the way, I really wanted to uh, touch on that, what you said. So there are these three areas, right, like that you mentioned, which is important with aggregators, the innovation, um, acquisition and the operation. Now, right. um, if you think about like uh, a normal, let's say, life cycle, everything starts with innovation or some type of an invention uh, yeah. and then it is about like operation. And then finally you start an in inorganic growth and acquisition. Now, when we look at exactly. the life cycle of an aggregator by pumping a billions of dollars, it is the other way around. And yeah. we, you know, then always the question is, is the same. Like for example, uh, I am more focused on the CPG space nowadays. And you know, like there are these big companies on the CPG space like Unilever or Procter and Gamble. And these guys are, you know, they own, uh, or Kellogg's, like they own like, let's say 50 to 500 brands. Now, like if you look at where their money is going in the last 50, 100 years, by the way, this, this is not like, like a last year's thing. I mean, they spent billions of dollars into first R&D. You know, it's yeah. not even like innovation. It's really, there is an R&D going on. And I think that's a missing component. Number two missing component is um, the products, like the aggregators acquire the products, but the products have a life cycle. And, uh, you know, it's like even SaaS, like, I mean, I'm the CEO of a SaaS company and there is a life cycle. If I just continue yeah. the same, do the same thing, I'm going to die, you know? Yeah. So the products also die. Uh, it's like between maybe, you know, one, two years to maybe up to 10 years, but there has to be an innovation or new versions. Something needs to happen. And I'm not, I'm not thinking it is possible that much without really focusing on one single category or single set of products. It's not even an Amazon category we are, I'm referring to, but really like an, a domain expertise uh, on a very specific thing. That's where I see that, um, you know, that will be, I fully agree with you. That will be the challenge. Um, and, I, and I think some, some aggregators also are taken that path too, which is focused on a particular category. 
and and I think um, certainly on the innovation side, they can specialize and potentially do that more effectively. Um, yeah, so I think there's no getting away from it. And you know, I'm not a finance or M&A guy. So when they raise this capital, um, what I don't know or I'm privy to is how much of that capital is there to fund the innovation piece of this, or is the thesis that the margins from current businesses is large enough to fund the R&D piece, which I'm not sure, I'm not the expert in this matter, but it is it is definitely an area that doesn't get talked about too much. What's your, uh, I mean, my, my, my understanding is 99% of the, uh, the aggregators that I talk to, which I think I talk to most of them, they all tell me that they are building their own software to operate, uh, yeah. their own PPC management and you and I, you know, also they have their own localization team of our, so it's like they are kind of trying to build this software development company, but they I haven't seen everything. any software. Yes. Yeah, I haven't seen any everything. of this pieces of this softwares, by the way, because it's very hard. And my response oh, to them is, is always the same. I mean, do you think that the Bank of America is like building a banking software because they are a bank, you know, like they try to make sure that they do the banking right, right? I mean, rather than the software. So, but that's kind of where I see kind of their R&D focus rather than the products itself, which is the, the key area. But I see an operational focus there, but, um, but you know, like, um, uh, who knows, maybe that one uh, crazy uh, guy that you mentioned that was like creating this company and like us, you know, we are the most efficient ones, you know, kind of continue to grow the company because uh, it's almost like I do everything A and Z in the company. And Omar, like think about that if we acquire your company uh, and, uh, you know, <laughs> what so will be... Yeah, and then you you go away like you're not working anymore. Uh, it's gonna be hard, you know. <laughs> it's gonna be yeah. super hard. You know? It's yeah. Uh, and, yeah, and I think that uh, look, I, I mean, at least in our experience, they're all trying to figure it out. They're partnering with multiple companies to do different things. Um, That's and, uh, this is a this will be a story to interrupt you. This will be definitely something from the future because all the big ones. Are doing this right now they're partnering up they, they try to stop what yeah. hi just men mentioned because it's gonna put them under the you know it's gonna make them completely uh, going out of the out of the motion so they try to partner and give packages and this is yeah. what i think as well the future sorry yeah yeah so um that all that being said obviously it's not the realm i you know, I live in all day, right? So we, you know, there's, it's, a, it's a segment of multiple segments we work with. And I do think that the, the use cases they have are, are different and unique. Um, you know, lots and lots of accounts, um, uh, all operational aspects for each account to be handled as opposed to a typical agency that may just be running advertising. Uh, but obviously as an aggregator, you're looking at every aspect of the business. Um, and so the use cases are slightly different. Um, that at least from our standpoint, we try to attack in the solutions we are building. Uh, certainly different from what a direct advertiser or brand needs and certainly different from what a typical agency needs. Um, so they are unique um, and scaling fast. Uh, so it does present an interesting innovation opportunity for us to cater to them. <laughs> so, <You're> right. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, that's very, very interesting. And now let's maybe talk a bit more on, to, on, on the subject of advertising. And um, I mean, yeah. one of the areas like we definitely see the more aggregators are in the space, they, they invest a lot of money to occupy the land, but also to, to preserve the land uh, on the Amazon, which means that, uh, you know, they spend more money on the advertising, which I'm pretty sure. And the CPC costs are raising as oh. a result of that now. Uh, the key question is, of course, we are more kind of on the side of the brands uh, and, uh, you know, what they what should they do with advertising? You know, maybe yeah. aggregators, it's still um, one, two percent of the game, by the way. It's still, you know, yeah. with 10, 11 billion dollars, it's, it's nothing compared to uh, like a 500 billion dollar Amazon game. But um, 
you know, I yeah. still see that in any case, the advertising price, the, the, the cost is, is, is going up. So what would yeah. be your advice in that respect? Yeah, so a few things on um, uh, advertising CPC is going up. I mean, there is history for us to look at, right? Which is you look at Google CPCs, you, know, you could look at Facebook uh, 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 advertising costs. Uh, they tend to go up over time. Uh, and to me, I, I don't know that aggregators uh, are the primary driver. There's just multiple factors, in my opinion, and they may be one of them. So, um, you know, CP, we should expect CPCs on Amazon to go up no matter what over time because of uh, more competition for the same amount of inventory. Uh, so that's bound to happen. So there is some of that. Uh, talking about competition or rather advertisers on Amazon, you know, we all traditionally, we've always thought about people who sell on Amazon as the advertisers on Amazon. Um, but increasingly, uh, there will be, and there already is, what are called non-endemic advertisers participating also, right? Which is, you know, you could be an insurance company, a travel company, you know, so the, uh, they can also start to participate in this advertising. Point being, there is more advertisers for the same space. Uh, so th that I think is a big part of the, the CPC stuff going up. And then the other thing is that, you know, Amazon, relatively speaking, to compare to other ad platforms, is relatively new. Uh, and I think the bigger, more sophisticated brands are getting better and better and better at this. And perhaps realizing, especially with COVID, that, you know, they could allocate more dollars to this. So the same companies are spending more and willing to pay more per click. Uh, so there is that aspect, right? So... And aggregators, yes, I mean, I think the way they will influence CPCs probably is that, you know, these fragmented base of sellers, they'll get more organized about it um, and perhaps be more organized about the spend that they're doing. Um, is that the big driver? I'm actually not sure, to be honest with you. Um, but CPCs are just going to go up no matter what, uh, whether the aggregators existed or not, you know. Um, so that's just okay, my point of view on this. I'm sure there's some impact of an organized group versus a fragmented group spending ad dollars. Um, but I think uh, to the other point about okay, what do you do with these uh, growing CPCs? I think we are getting to this, uh, uh, on the maturity curve, we are getting to this place with Amazon ads where uh, incremental wins uh, is a function of uh, uh, what I call elbow grease, okay? So it's like uh, the daily grind, you know? Yeah. Uh, there's a ton of ideas when it comes to ad optimization. There's no dearth of ideas. You just have to go search on LinkedIn or YouTube. You get a lot of people giving you ideas. That's not the issue. Uh, but to actually get optimization uh, uh, going and working in your favor and getting those incremental wins, it is a disciplined process uh, of experimentation and ongoing execution. There's no choice around it. And that, uh, I know, um, so that's kind of at the high level that just has to happen. You get, have to get incredibly more specific and detailed and smarter and disciplined about your execution. What does that translate to um, specifically? Uh, continue to go focus on the long tail. So keep expanding your uh, long tail of targets you currently spend money on. Um, go after ad formats where you know, there may be just a little less competition, for example, uh, sponsor brand video, right? Not everybody has great video content. So there's just not enough, as much participation as let's say sponsored product keyword uh, campaign. So, so chase that down um, and get super granular with your account structures, right? Uh, that relevance of keywords to products um, uh, and the more segmented it is, the better. Uh, and then also be strategic about uh, you know, what's happening uh, with your ad spend? Is there a lifetime value component to bringing that first transaction? If so, maybe you're willing to pay more uh, for that first uh, transaction versus just looking at a cost for that first transaction, depending on the type of business here, you may want to take a lifetime value view uh, in, in thinking about your ad dollars. Um, yeah, so, I mean, there's, more and more things I could be talking about, but I think really it boils down to the time for granular. The rising CPC is the only way to circumvent that and make them work for you is a lot more granular execution, a lot more operating discipline, 
automate the pieces that you don't have to do manually, <laughs> uh, and then continuous experimentation. Yeah. There is just no way around those things, <laughs> um, in my view. Yeah, that's really true. Because from what I've seen the last years, obviously in the United States, when we talk about the United States, the PPC costs went up to the roof. It's, uh, it, it, it almost left all the smaller retailers, uh, they could not do anything because it's just, uh, it's just too much, you know, it would, it would yeah. eat up all their margin and everything they have. On the yeah. contrary to the, to the European Union, we have the same numbers in PPC, what we have like in the United States 10 years ago. So mm -hmm. that's why it's, it's always very interesting for everyone to have a look outside of the US, for example, because competing with giants already, you know, maybe maybe it's or, or even India. I'm sure that the PPC costs the, it's another level than uh, on the European market. So what I always mention, and and what I personally have seen as well is that the aggregators um, didn't push the prices up too much. So we still have a lot of space in the US before they actually get and hire the talent and can go to it, we still have a little bit of time, you know? So, uh, and especially in the European Union. Do you think that's, uh, that's it's, it's uh, what I see or what I, um, what I experience? Can you elaborate on that? I mean, um, I think, um, C one, thing, one thing I know is that CPCs do go up over time on these ad platforms and they stabilize after a certain point. Um, uh, because of, you know, so I think relatively speaking, um, the less mature the markets, perhaps the CPCs are lower, uh, which I think is what you're referring to. Uh, I, uh, that makes sense. I, I, you know, I think I agree with that. Um, but then, you know, a lot of the brands certainly get, you know, most clients we work with, uh, predominantly are US based, um, you still have the core business to manage and operate and execute. Uh, so, so regardless of what's happening in these internal, international markets, like, you know, to be competitive in, in, in your local market, let's say US, which is, uh, which is where we certainly have seen CPCs go up. Yeah. I, go back, I go back to the point of, okay, how do you operate? It goes back to things I mentioned earlier. Right? Um, but the time is now to really focus on processes that are all about uh, granular ongoing optimization. So it's, you can eke out your wins. Uh, the, the easy way, easy, the easy time is over. <laughs> right. <laughs> I have a question here, uh, Surinath, and it's about the, the role of like, we talk about aggregators and brands, but when it comes to advertising, there is a role of the agencies as well. And yeah. there are traditional agencies. I see people who are really kind of, uh, kind of they are hesitant to the tools because it's like the tool is like replacing their manpower or intelligence. Some others are like, they love the tools they, because they started using automation and they see it as a differentiator. Um, and, you know, first of all, like when you look at your customer base, like, what percentage is really indirect through the uh, agencies? Are you following that route? And if you do, um, what type of like the, the, the behaviors that you, you observe with the agencies and their uh, way of operating on, on, the, on, the, on the Amazon space? Yeah, so, uh, so uh, good question. We certainly work with direct advertisers as, as well as agencies today. Um, uh, see, one interesting stat um, uh, that, you know, for this specific uh, topic is, again, I go back to the world of Google and see where spend stabilized. And I was talking to someone at uh, Google and what I heard there was um, about 50 to 60% of spend is direct. Actually, the 40 to 50% is direct and the rest is agency managed. Uh, in the Amazon world, my sense is that the agency managed portion of ad spend will be bigger uh, because there's a lot more lack of expertise. Uh, and also, I don't necessarily think that that expertise gap will get plugged. For instance, if I'm, an, if I'm, an, if I'm a manufacturer, am I, am I really going to go invest in building uh, Amazon PPC talent internally? I mean, not everyone will. And I, intuitively, I feel like this is a space where 
agencies will have a bigger role to play uh, as a proportion of the total ad spend. Now, that's just my view on this. Um, and the second, so the types of agencies, you're right. I mean, so we run into uh, broadly, uh, I would say three kinds of agencies. One is a, a companies that have been like third party representative firms, manufacturer rep firms that, that they were handling the relationship between Amazon and them. And now they have had to step into the ad optimization game, right? Um, and so generally they've not done a lot of digital advertising before. Um, uh, and this is relatively new. And then on the other side is ad agencies that have been doing ad optimization in the Googles and Facebooks of the world. Now they're sidestepping into uh, Amazon. So, uh, and then there is another third layer, which is I will do everything uh, for Amazon only, like listing optimization, ad optimization, like all, so all of that. So, um, so those are the flavors we see. The uh, tools versus no tools. Um, I think the correlation there is like, uh, what type of growth plans do they really have? Uh, because, you know, if it's a lifestyle business managing five to 10 clients, um, you know, you probably can operate, you know, potentially without tools, but if you're going to scale up much further than that, there's just no way uh, you start to lose clients because your quality degrades. So I think part of that is tied to like, what are they trying to do with that business and how big they're trying to get? Because end of the day, um, you know, agencies uh, pay a lot, a very close attention to margin as they should. And a tool is an expense. <laughs> so, so I think uh, it just really depends on what kind of growth and scale plans they have. Um, but I think these days though, the, you know, uh, I don't run into, I mean, there are agencies that I think don't use tools. At the least, if they're doing that, they're certainly growing something homegrown. Home, they're building something internally. Because it's just, I mean, it's just so hard to operate without any kind of automation at this point um, and stay competitive. Uh, yes, I, I see it the same way. Um, because yeah. at some point, you will have to get up you will have to, uh, as, a, as a PPC agency, for example, um, you have to get tools. And as well, what you have to do, even uh, because most of them are English speakers, you have to localize. You know, uh, if, you go, if, you, if, you, if you go in markets, same as in Google, same as everything, if you go in markets and, and just put yourself there, it's just not possible you, because you have to uh, have to an understanding of the uh, culture uh, in the different countries to just click on, uh, bet on keywords, what you don't really understand is, is, is quite hard. And I yeah. think there we will hit as well um, the, uh, at the aggregator space. We will have as they will have as well facing some challenges in there because although they have a lot of funds, um, having a lot of funds and making poss possibly minus uh, by betting on keywords they don't understand is as well something. And here we go again with the packages and everything. They need to, you know, have have teams or outside agencies which are used to it, which have a process and which are doing this all the time. Yeah, so uh, it's a interesting point. I mean, the, the other unique aspect in certainly in the Amazon realm is the, the need for localization. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that you just brought up. Um, again, uh, that always existed, but it's a lot more prominent now because like, you know, you need the localization skills to have great content. Uh, you know, and make the right choices on the advertising side. So it's a broader scope of work that localization experts have to undertake. Um, and that definitely is a little bit unique. And as an agency, um, uh, that is an important aspect if you are an agency that is aiming for international growth. Um, and it's not easy to do, right? So you can't just go... <laughs> is you can't just go hire a bunch of localization experts just like that. So I think that is a, that is a hurdle for, uh, for agencies. Right. Uh, by the way, the other thing is, um, you know, back to this, the, the, the strategies for the brands and aggregators and the advertising plays a key role. But I always kind of think about why the consumers are on Amazon. Because like, mm -hmm. like you know, the advertising is still the seller side of the story. But when we look at the consumers, yeah. they love the fast and free shipping. 
They allow yeah. the broad selection of things that they see on Amazon. And the third reason is also the best pricing. Now, what I'm thinking is, um, you know, like uh, everything plays a great role, but uh, if the like if the aggregators just spend a lot of money, um, like to develop the advertising software, uh, hire all the people to do the PPC, and and you know, kind of hire the best guys and the best, uh, try to kind of um, operate everything, but without creating the the efficiency, the effectiveness, um, the brands always also have a, a much better maybe price because they have a lean operation, uh, you know, run by a, an, an innovative guy who is the founder or the, or the founders of the company making this uh, very um, e efficient and effective, therefore, the prices are much more reasonable. And as a result, uh, you know, with some level of advertising still, because they have, they have the best prices, they can yeah. get better results. So sure. it may not be just uh, the advertising aspect, but also the, the pricing aspect, which can help them to sell more. Yeah, I um, agree. And I think the, the way we frame this is, um, for advertising to work, there just has to be an underlying clear uh, differentiated value proposition of a product. Uh, a product that looks the same, uh, you know, and is priced thirty percent higher. Advertising is not going to help. <laughs> so, and we've seen that happen, uh, right? So, um, yeah, we, I mean, without an underlying value proposition on that product, whatever that value proposition, better margin, uh, higher conversion rate because it has some features and capabilities, whatever that is, uh, that's a Im super important consideration for advertising to work. <laughs> um, uh, part of what we do, by the way, is uh, in the way we have built our tech, um, success of Amazon is influenced by factors that you don't see in the advertising data. Not Amazon, advertising success uh, is dependent on factors that you don't see in the advertising data. So, if all you're doing is looking at advertising metrics to improve advertising performance, it's like searching for a lost key under a lampshade. <laughs> uh, so uh, there just has to be a holistic view to uh, optimizing uh, ad spend in my view. I agree. So, I mean, thank you, Serena. I think that was really like some great insights uh, into like all the advertising space, as well as your ideas on how aggregators will uh, impact the whole Amazon game. Um, any last uh, recommendations as it's like Q4 uh, and, uh, yeah. you know, like November is like really the, 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 the hottest uh, month even yeah. more important than October and December. So True. any any feedback, any any recommendations to the sellers? Yeah. No, um, so yes, it's Q4. Uh, I say it's prime time without prime day being in Q4 this year. Prime day was in Q4 last year. So, so one, one less burden, I guess. But uh, I think, uh, see, I could reel off the basic hygiene aspects of uh, making sure your advertising accounts are in good shape. Right, so um, you know, you know, products, product content, um, you know, promoting the deals you have in place, and so on and so forth. Um, but I think you know, the main, uh, I would say, top of mind topic for people is how shipping has impacted things. So um, matching up your ad spend to tie to where you have enough inventory to have a runway. Uh, is something I would just focus on. And you know, uh, not being on shelf is a lot worse than being on shelf. So ensuring that uh, products with lesser inventory, uh, you're not putting a lot of ad dollars behind it so you run out of it faster. <laughs> uh, so tying inventory status at a product level to where you allocate your ad spend is the one thing I would just pay a lot of attention to. Um, uh, and then also be aware that there's a couple of ad formats that are inventory aware. So sponsored products and I think sponsored display. Um, if you are truly out of inventory, 
your ads don't show. However, uh, even there, there's an exception where your ads could still show and the product is coming soon or something like that. So, uh, and then sponsored brand is completely inventory uh, unaware. So you could be spending money on stuff that, you know, either is not there um, uh, or has this coming soon uh, messaging. So keep an eye on that to watch where your dollars are going. Simple message being uh, tying inventory status to where your ad dollars are going is going to be important. I yeah, think great. that is that is a great advice. Um, and I would always as well say the keywords for the European Union, even if you don't have them right now, just, just go back to the year before and, and pull them out because they won't change, you know, or won't change like massively. A little bit, yeah. but, you know, <clears throat> just to, uh, to add it up. Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you very much, Serena, for the Q4 advices. And thank you so our... much being yeah. our guest today so i uh, really appreciate it and uh you know looking forward to you know the next time to have you on our uh top <laughs> guest thank you definitely thanks so much My pleasure. thank you so much Rina. take care bye bye